Hello ladies and gents, we're doing another video on plants and we're looking still at transporting plants. This time we're going to look at the AS Unit 2 topic, which is how water moves up the xylem. So here's what we're going to look at today in our objectives. We're going to understand the three different theories that contribute to water movement up the xylem, the first of which is root pressure, the second of which is the capillary effect or capillary action, and the third of which is cohesion, tension and transpiration. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do when we talk about root pressure before we dive into this is re-watch this video. This is talking about how water enters the roots from the soil and this is really going to give you a good understanding before we, uh, we push on with movement up the xylem. So I'm going to assume that you've already done that and let's crack on and talk about this thing called root pressure. Well, root pressure is caused by the influx of water from the soil and this is creating a positive hydrostatic pressure. As that water forces its way into the roots, it pushes through the cortex and pushes water into the xylem. Obviously that's not entirely true because there is a bit of active transport manipulating the water potential of cells and the xylem vessel itself here. But nevertheless, that water being forced into the roots and then forced into the xylem vessel is enough to push the water up the xylem itself by a small amount. But how do we actually go ahead and prove this? Well, we can use a device called a manometer. And what all this does is it uses a column of liquid to measure the pressure that's being exerted. So we've removed the leaves, so we're getting rid of any effective transpiration. Um, and all we're purely doing here is looking at how much water is forced into that manometer from the stump that's being planted there. So the only thing we've got intact there is the roots. Moving on, we should look at this thing called capillary action. And capillary action is caused by the adhesive properties of water. And the idea behind this is that water will adhere or stick to anything that isn't water. Um, and it will stick to the sides of vessels, uh, glassware, uh, or even xylem vessels themselves. And in fact, if that vessel is small enough, if it's narrow enough in diameter, water will actually creep up the side and up the entire vessel uh, against the force of gravity. And this is caused by the adhesive properties of water, as I've said before. But how can we prove this? What evidence do we have? Well, we can observe this in glassware. So in chemistry, if you're a chemist, you'll always be told when you use a measuring cylinder, you should measure from the bottom of the meniscus. Um, and the reason we do that is because uh, that gives a true indication of the volume of the liquid, uh, and then we're not taking into account where the water has already started to creep up the side of the vessel, caused by capillary action. Uh, and as we see here, the narrower the diameter of the glassware, the more the water creeps up. So in theory, if you had a, a capillary tube narrow enough, water would continue to creep all the way up. Now in reality, this really doesn't contribute all that much to the movement of water up the xylem. It's very, very minimal at best. So that lets us, leaves us with our, our final uh, contributing factor, our final theory, and this is probably the most complicated one. This is cohesion tension. So to do this properly, we should really understand a little bit of the biochemistry of water. So chemists, you may have already done this if you've uh, been studying electronegativity at all. But we'll start by talking about water as a polar molecule. Now polar means you've got two ends of the molecule with different properties. And in the case of water, uh, what we have here is the full structure of water. We've got an oxygen uh, bonded to two separate hydrogen atoms. And then on the oxygen, we've got these two pairs of crosses, which represent lone pairs of unbound electrons. Um, and they sort of contribute a little bit, but really that oxygen is quite uh, quite strongly electronegative, which means it attracts the electrons that are being shared with the hydrogen atoms. And as a result of that, you get more negative charges down near the oxygen end of the molecule, which gives it a slight negative charge relative to the hydrogen atom ends, which have a relatively positive charge. And if you're a chemist, you probably refer to the oxygen as delta negative and the hydrogen as delta positive, just means they have a change uh, in charge. Now we know from physics that opposites attract, so what happens is that the oxygen will at be attracted to the hydrogen of an adjacent molecule and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and this is a weak force of electrostatic attraction and these are known as hydrogen bonds. So we've come across these many, many times before, but this is the only time we've really explained what they are. So that's what those are. 
And basically what's going to happen is, up the xylem, all of this water is going to form a continuous column. So loads and loads and loads of water molecules attracted to one another. Um, and that's the cohesive properties of water. They attract one another. But where does the tension come in? Well, cohesion tension, um, we're talking about a column of water being held together by cohesion, like I said previously, in the xylem by hydrogen bonds. But when water evaporates from the leaves, that's transpiration, a tension or a pulling force is exerted on the column. And as a result of that, water is going to move upwards throughout the xylem. But how do we prove that? Well, we have strong experimental proof um, through another similar sort of piece of apparatus, the manometer, except this time we're not actually going to use uh, the root of the plant. We're just going to use a cut stem. And again, what we can see here is that water will move up the manometer. Um, and we also see that if a plant has more leaves, there will be therefore more transpiration and therefore more movement up the manometer. Uh, we also see that there is the largest movement of water uh, during daylight hours when the stomata are open and the plant is actively photosynthesizing and therefore um, there is more transpiration going on. If we put all those three things together, overall, transpiration has the largest impact. So cohesion tension is the biggest contributing factor to movement up the xylem. Coming in close second is root pressure, which has some impact. And then capillary action is a lowly third, having very little impact whatsoever. So if we summarise this, there are three theories. First is root pressure, which is caused by the influx of water into the roots. Uh, the second is adhesion or the capillary effect or capillary action, which is water adhering or sticking to the inside of the xylem. And then finally, cohesion tension, which is the fact that water is cohesive and forms a column which is pulled up the xylem as a result of transpiration or evaporation from the leaves. I hope that's helped you guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'd hope that you would like, comment and subscribe and keep watching my channel. Thank you.